The electron configuration is the specific address of an electron within the orbitals and suborbitals of an atom. The ones we're about to look at will be electrons of atoms in the ground state only and not excited or ionic electrons, which we'll look at in a later video. Some quick rules before we begin. The first one is the Aufbau principle. Aufbau literally translates to build up, and this is the rule that tells you that you fill the electrons from the lowest available orbit and then slowly start putting electrons into higher energy and higher energy orbitals. Hun's rule says that when you have more than one degenerate or same energy suborbital, you put one electron into each, and once each orbital has one electron, then you can go back and start doubling them up. So for example, if I have the px, py, and pz orbitals, and I have a total of four electrons to fill. I don't start with two electrons in px and two electrons in py. Instead, I will put one in px, py, pz, and then go back and double up on px. And finally, we have the Pauli exclusion principle. And what this says is that no two electrons can have the same exact address between their principal energy level, orbital, sunk orbital, or up and down spin. At least one of these factors have to be different to ensure that the two electrons are not located in the same uh, space. Now let's see how this applies on the table. Remember that the atomic number represents the number of protons in an atom and that a neutral atom is going to have the same number of protons and electrons. Understanding this principle lets us look at the periodic table, look at the atomic number, and figure out how many electrons are in that neutral atom. If chlorine is number 17, a neutral chlorine has 17 electrons, a neutral iodine 53 electrons, and the neutral barium 56 electrons. Another thing to keep in mind about the table, given that they're organized by increasing atomic number, if I look at the electrons of one atom and then the electrons of the following atom, the only difference is the addition of one electron. Helium, which has two electrons, is really just hydrogen plus one electron. And oxygen, which has eight, is really just nitrogen plus one electron. Using this idea, I can look at the table and just determine that what I see for one atom has to include everything that the previous atoms had in their configuration. While this may sound slightly confusing, once you get it on the table, you'll have a much easier time finding the electron configurations. So let's put it into practice. If I look at the hydrogen atom, it has a total of one electron and appears in the principal energy level number one and in the S block. So I say that hydrogen has a 1s1 because n equals 1, s, and 1 electron. If I move over to helium, I have to pass hydrogen in order to get to helium. That means I have 1s2. If I move down to the second row, for example lithium, I have to pass 1s1 and 1s2 and then I get to 2s1. So the electron configuration for lithium is 1s2, 2s1. Now let's make the examples a little more exciting. Let's look at carbon. In order to get to carbon, on the n equals 1 level, I pass 1 and 2. So carbon will start with 1s2, and then I pass in the 2s, 2s1, and 2s2. So that will give me 2s2. Then I jump over to the 2p orbital and I pass 1 and 2. That gives me 2p2. So the total electron configuration for carbon is 1s2, 2s2, 2p2. Let's move down to sulfur and try this again. I have to pass two electrons in the 1s orbital. So sulfur starts with 1s2. I have to pass two electrons in the 2s orbital, that's 2s2. 
In the 2p orbital, I have to pass a total of 6 electrons. That's 2p6. Moving on to 3s, I have 2 electrons. And finally, in the 3p, I have 1, 2, 3, and 4, giving me 3p4. And the electron configuration for sulfur, 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, and 3p4. I hope you enjoyed this video. Test your knowledge of this topic by taking the free quiz link below. And don't forget to like and share this video with your friends. Have questions? Post them in the comments below or use the contact form on layofersci.com forward slash contact. I also offer online private tutoring via Skype. For a full list of subjects covered and additional study information, visit me at layofersci.com.